Now, you might not have needed the tea, but everybody need toothpaste. And if you don't believe that, then stay your ass the hell away from me. But, baby, let me tell you how I keep my smile so bright and so white and so radiant. It is called Lucida. Y'all, this toothpaste, I swear by it, it has activated charcoal in it, which will keep your teeth feeling and looking bright and white and it also keep your breath from smelling all funky and like last night's debauchery drop down in the description box click this link and get you some of this toothpaste you won't regret it y'all i just got through watching this interview with dr heavenly and martel hope from love and marriage huntsville and my spirit is vexed hexed and drunk text all around the world in Ayaya. There is so much here to unpack and some other behind the scenes details I think y'all need to know that'll make some of this make sense. Let's talk about it. watching uh, the interview that Dr. Heavenly did with Martel Holt and I must tell you y'all my spirit is all kind of bothered and my last nerve has been tap danced on by the Universal Circus. That's how bothered I am. Now let me first start out by telling y'all when Dr. He when it first came out that Dr. Heavenly was doing an interview with Martel, I'm not going to lie to you, I just really wasn't interested in, in watching it because I wasn't really interested in what Martell had to say, I'm not going to lie, I, I, I rushed to judgment based on what we've seen of him on the show and in social media. And in the back of my mind, I was like, this is just going to be Martell playing, uh, playing some more of his games. And you know what? I'm so glad that I know myself because after taking two days to watch this, that's exactly how I feel at the very end of the situation, that it was Martel playing some more of his Martel Hulk games. I've taken a lot of notes, and we've got a whole lot to unpack. But let me start out with this. Uh, a couple days before Dr. Heavenly's interview was posted, I was home sleep, and I have a tendency, y'all, of when I haven't gotten good rest, I'll put my phone on Do Not Disturb. And so when I woke up, I had about eight missed calls from uh, no caller ID. And then I had two missed calls from Arian Curry, the mistress. So I called her back. She said, Martell trying to contact you. I said, okay, child, I'm asleep. You know, how's it going? Is everything going on? Or whatever the case may be. Um, and that was the end of that. I said, all right, I'm up. Tell them, tell them, call me back. So my phone rings about two or three minutes later. It is Martell. It says, no call ID. I said, Martel Holt. He starts laughing. He's like, hey, how you doing? I said, listen, man, I ain't, you know, I ain't with you calling me from these block numbers. If you want to talk to me, we need to establish some trust. And it goes both ways. And he laughed. And he was like, well, shit. You know, I need to see first if you somebody I even want to talk to. We, ex we exchanged pleasantries and it was cool. So then he starts talking. And he's like, you know, you know, man, it's just. This show, he's like, I don't know if you, you've seen everything that's been going on. And I said, I really haven't been keeping up. The last thing I saw was this live from Melody or whatever about she was trying to get her clothes and stuff. And he just started talking about how, you know, so many things are not true. And how he's kept his mouth quiet for so long. And he's been painted to be the bad guy. And, 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 um... She's done some things too, and he just feels like it's time for him to get his side out. So I'm just listening to him talk. And so I said to him, because he was talking, but not saying nothing. So obviously you know who I am. Obviously you know what I do. So I said to him, I said, all right, like cut to the chase. What do you want with me? Then he says... And, and this perplexed me the way he framed this. He says, well, I was hoping you would ask me for an interview. And I looked at the phone 
And I was just thinking to myself, who does this motherfucker think he is? Like, I interview people all the time. If I wanted to interview you, I would DM you. You DM me before I've got a line of communication. If I wanted to interview, I'd call Amy and ask her to set it up. If I wanted to interview you, I'd call uh, Silva and Own Studios, who set up the interview with me and Kimmy and Tisha. If I wanted to interview you, I'd have got Carlos King on the line. Nigga, you call me. What the fuck you want? You know what I'm saying? So, so it was just like, ooh, I was like, okay, Q. But, you know, in this role, the man obviously had something that he wanted to say. And hell, if he was going to use my platform, long story short, I ain't gonna pretend like I couldn't have got nothing out of the deal. I couldn't have made a couple coins off that interview. So I was like, okay, if he's come to me and wanna talk, let me not run him off. Because if he's seen my stuff, he already knows kind of how I feel about this situation. And so, we're talking, and I was like, you know, well, I think we should do this, so on and so forth. And then the phone rang. He said that that was Melody, and he would call me back. He never called me back. A couple days later, he's got an interview with Dr. Heavenly. Now, when I hung up the phone with him, based on what he was telling me and the way he was talking in riddles, because, again, he kept talking about the things she's done but never had nothing concrete. In my spirit, I felt like what Martel was looking for was someone to coddle him. Someone to take his side and agree with him. Someone to help launch a hate campaign against Melody. And somebody to help um, substantiate the things that he's made up in his mind about this situation and how he's in the right. Um, I'm going to say this. I think people who share Martel's entire setup are the most dangerous people on this earth. Follow me here. Martel is so out of touch with reality and in how he shows up in the world and in self-awareness that it is dangerous to the average day-to-day -day person walking across the street. And I say that because he's just as bad as dealing with somebody who has paranoid schizophrenia. You walking across the street and in reality we see a red light, green light, yellow light, and he sees a ghoul, a goblin, and a witch on a broom. It's like it's just almost, it's infuriating and impossible. Uh, infuriating and just, yeah, you know, impossible that he does not have an ounce of awareness as to how he is showing up in the world. So here's what I want to do, Martel, since we did not do the interview. And this is not even a bashing session. This is legitimately me giving you some media advice. All right. You have a major PR problem. You are a walking PR crisis and nightmare in your current state and that's not an attack to you public relations is a battle of perceptions all right and there is something about the way you conduct yourself what you put out and the way that the average person receives that information that their brain outputs dishonesty lack of trust He's a player. He's playing around. He's childish. He's arrogant. Da, 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 da. And you say that you're none of these things. Fine. You're not. Well, okay, you're not. But then if you're not, and if what you desire is for other people to see you in alignment with the way you see yourself, then you're going to have to change some of the ways you move in these media streets, player. Like the number one thing that I think the average viewer finds infuriating with Martel is that you give off this energy like you're smarter than everybody else in the room. And you're not. Quite frankly, you're really not that smart. Because if you were... Number one, you would see that nobody's buying what you're selling, number one. And number two, you wouldn't move the way you were because you would be in tune with the fact that this is just not 
going to go over well. And I think the other part, and I don't know if therapy can give you maturity or if what Martell has is just a straight up mental illness and that there is nothing to, that can be done, but you have constructed all of these reasons and explanations in this alternative reality and then you get frustrated with the herd, the lion's share of the population because we are not seeing and or experiencing the same things you are. And you ain't even experiencing this shit. You concocted it in your head because you lack the ability to sit and stew in the shit that you've created. Like what I get from Martell right now in this whole, I want to get her shit out and I want to do this and I want to put a dagger. What it feels like, and I may be wrong, but what it feels like is in the past, he's never taken Melody serious, right? She ain't going to leave the same way a lot of men do. Um, that bitch ain't going nowhere. Where's she going to go? I'm the breadwinner. I got all the money. I run this. I'm her security. I'm the only thing she know. I'm her first. I'm her children's father. All these anchors that these women have to men that often give a lot of them men like Martell license to do what they want to do without any regard for their feelings. And now that Mel has switched up her flow, like she don't file, she out and about, she want her shit, she moving out for real, for real. Not just talking, but don't got another place to stay and put some action. This has never happened before. And now she's like, oh shit, like, oh shit, there's a real life consequence to what the fuck I done did. She's not just rolling over and taking it and taking it and taking it and worshiping the ground that I walk on in my dirty drawers. And he does not know how to process that, and he is lashing out right now. Let's not get it twisted. You know, Mel has been a goddamn fool for a very long time. God bless children. I love children. I love babies, and I would never speak ill of that woman's children or anyone's children. But having that last baby from him was the stupidest shit she could have ever did. A man cheat on you for five fucking years, get on the TV show, talk to you any kind of way, make you look all kind of stupid, and, and then you go off and have... A ba a, a, another baby from in the midst of this in hopes of doing what Lisa Nicole had another baby from the nigga and he still ain't do right and I'm going to talk to y'all at the end of this video daughter about having babies from niggas and what it'll do to you but let me get, just get right into the interview real quick now that I got the preface and the preamble out the way um last thing that I want to say Martell, I'm just going to give you a word of advice. And again, this is coming from somebody who interviews people for a living, who analyzes reality TV for over a decade for a living. The best thing to do, my brother, to help yourself, to help you change people's perception of you being dishonest, being sneaky, uh, you need to work on your pivot. When an interviewer asks you a question that you don't want to answer, Martell, the best thing for you to do is say, at this time, I'm not at liberty to talk about that. Or, you know, you know, Dr. Heavenly, I really, Dr. Heavenly, Arian is not on the show. She didn't sign up for this. I don't want to make this conversation about Arian. That would have been the respectable thing to do. That would have been something that people can wrap their head around. Or a simple, I don't want to answer that question. But when somebody asks you questions like, is she pregnant? It's a very straightforward answer that we all already know the answer to. Interview, interview, uh, interview somebody one on one. As an interviewer, you never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. Ariane is uh, seven months pregnant with a baby boy that's due in December. Everyone knows. So then, when she asks you, "Do you know?" And then you start acting ev evasive, shifting in your chair. You need to call her. Coupled with the fact you honestly expect somebody to believe you have not seen this girl. The girl that you've been in a relationship with for five years that has caused your marriage to end indirectly or directly. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> now all of a sudden you ain't seen her and it ain't fucked her in so long. When we needed your ass to not see her and not fuck her in so long, you couldn't do it. But now, 
that you're actually hers for the picking, you ain't seen her. You don't know if she pregnant. And I'm Britney Spears. Dr. Heavenly asked him, well, when the last time you slept with her? I don't know. Well, bitch, we definitely know it's been within the last uh, seven, eight, nine months because the girl is about to pop. The girl is good and pregnant. Good and Christmas, baby. Pregnant. Good and Christmas, baby. Pregnant. And the question that Dr. Heavenly didn't ask that I wish she would have, and maybe she wasn't thinking, would have been like, okay, so if you haven't seen her so long, what has happened with that relationship? You know what I'm saying? Did y'all fall? Like, did she move on? Like, there was just so much to go. And that's the thing. Martell did not want to talk about Aaron Curry and the pregnancy because that's the whole situation that's got him in this situation in the first place. All he wanted was a dumping ground to try to put some negative information out there about Melody. And then, uh, back off. That's not how this works when you call and you're trying to reach out to a media person and use their platform. It's got to be a two-way exchange of information, not just you come on here to use my follower and my celebrity to tarnish somebody. That's called being used. That's not an interview. That's not an exchange of ideas going on in that scenario. Um, and it was sad, not to mention, the things that you were saying about Melody were so unsubstantiated that the average viewer is looking like, what is this? Like, the thing about your cheating is, number one, there's a fat-faced, eight-month pregnant uh, young lady running around the streets of Huntsville right now. Proof. There's video. Proof. Every, there's in, in, in interview. Proof. Like, we have proof. These things you said about Mel in an attempt to tarnish her name, although they may be true or may not be true, it would have helped the viewing public and your case had you provided us with the receipts. You can't expect you because, number one, you already don't have the trust of the... God, you just needed me to be your fucking publicist. Jesus Christ. You already don't have the trust of the people. Therefore, anything you say out your mouth, even if you say, good morning, the sky is yellow, the sky is blue, people are going to scrutinize it with a fine tooth comb looking for an inconsistency and a lie because that is already the reputation that you have garnered, my brother. Please listen to me. Please call me back because I just want to help you. I just want to help you pro bono. So that's number one. So that being said, now what looks like you coming out against your wife in retaliation for her finally standing up for herself, it's hard for people to believe what you're saying without receipts. So we need to see the stuff from the lawyer. If she fucking the lawyer, meeting up with the lawyer, going to IHA with the lawyer to do more than sign paperwork, and you got the pictures and the screenshots and stuff, and you want us to believe you, then you need to show us. You've got to show me love. Too early for me to hit my note. Heartbreaks and promises. She's had more than her share. Oh, yeah. I'm tired of giving my love and getting nowhere. That lady was tired of giving her love and getting nowhere. Okay, except getting rolled hard and put away wet and getting more damn babies. Um, so that, that that's the thing. You, you have got to give us something because we're not going to blindly support you. We already think one way of you. Um, here was the other thing. Like, Martell, your whole defense, and I would have told you this, and, and, and honestly and truthfully, you probably should have damn interviewed with me because anybody who knows how Dr. Heavenly feels about the role of a man, the role of a woman, marriage, that union under God, like, Dr. Heavenly in that regard is a very strong traditionalist. You would have known that you couldn't have got on that um, platform with Dr. Heavenly Kinds with that faulty ass argument of what well, I che um, I cheated because she wasn't doing what she was supposed to do. You know, you were looking for credit and you were looking for somebody to, to, to coddle you and to to support your feelings, Martel, and here is what I do offer you. Man, woman, and or flower pot. I can sympathize with and understand anyone who feels unfulfilled in any sort of relationship configuration, right? Okay. She's not giving me sex. I'm unfulfilled. She's not going to dinner. She's not rubbing my back. I feel unfulfilled. 
But here is where you go wrong and here is where your explanation is very faulty from its inception. Because you have feelings of unfulfillment that does not give you the right to go hurt me in search of that fulfillment. That is a very immature logic. And Dr. Heavenly was so correct when she said, you sound like a 17 year old boy. And then you wanted to have, instead of being able to take a beat and stew and what she was saying, then you wanted to get into a war of words with her over semantics. When at the end of the day, she may not have said it verbatim, but the thought was the same. But again, those are those types of childish play on words that you do that make people look at you and just be like, man, he full of shit. And it's so funny because during this interview, I so wanted my perception of you to be changed, much like my perception of Tamar was changed with this Tamron Hall interview. I wanted to better understand some of the newly revealed details that you have, that you were to provide or so I thought that was going to give me perspective into what makes you tick and why things are the way they are. And I did not get that. I left, I left with you further substantiating why myself and the viewers feel the way we feel about what you do. Martel, the mature thing to do, the man thing to do, would have been a divorcer. And you did, you did finally say that. The right thing to do to somebody, especially if you love somebody. And here's the other thing that I don't understand about men in that particular situation. Okay, if you ain't gonna do it for the woman, do it for your kids. Fuck that bitch. Right? Fuck her. But I'm gonna do right by you because I love my kids so much that I don't ever want to put my kids in a situation that they see daddy hurt the person that brought them on this fucking planet. Like, I'm sitting here, I was cringing because I was like, you're doing this interview with Dr. Heavenly sounding all cringy and your children are going to one day watch the way you did they mama. Like, they're going to have to watch that. And that's going to hurt the way you are making light of the way you treated and hurt it, they mama, and then blaming they mama for breaking up y'all family by way of having a mistress and getting her pregnant. But you can't see beyond yourself and see anybody else, and that's why people are saying that you are arrogant and you are narcissistic. And it's funny because I do respect the fact that at the very end of it all, you said that people have been telling me this since you were 17 years old and you don't see it. Okay, so the first, you know, part of any type of healing is awareness. Now, here's the second part. Now that you have identified the fact that people have been telling you this since high school, here is where you have to pause and take a beat. If everybody has been telling you this for that long, and I'm assuming you're approaching 40, somewhere in that age bracket, give or take a couple years. At what point do you take the next step and say, this perception of me is bringing me turmoil, stress, and harm in my personal life and harming those around me? Let me go see if I can sit down with a professional to help me better understand what is it that I'm doing or what is causing this alternate reality that I seem to have. Because right now, the average viewer is just looking at it as a lack of accountability. Like, he just refuses to be accountable. He just refuses to take accountability. And because I'm a very empathetic person, and I want to give you my sympathies, Martel, I really do, and all my empathy, all that, that, that you deserve just as a black man, I want to give it to you, but you got to give me reason to, brother. Like, you got to help us understand why we should be empathetic towards your cause. Because right now, it's just coming off with whatever missing piece of information that you're not providing. It's just coming off as you a childish little boy who lacks accountability and the ability to clean up the mess that he has made. Um, here's the other thing that I want to move to. Oh, another point I want to make, you know, you say that Mel was um, not doing this and not doing that and so on and so forth. And my question is, then why would you want to be with her? 
it would seem to me that if you were just that unfulfilled, you just walked away from her ass and never had came, and never had come back. Um, that point. Now here's the next thing. We 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 at this point we're going to stop referring to Arian Curry as the mistress, the side chick. And start calling her Ariane Curry and begin to give her a full identity in the grand scheme of all of this. That's what's going on because it's not like she's this hidden person. Just how with Beyonce is Becky with the good hair. We don't quite know who the person is. We think we might know, but we don't quite know. So we'll continue calling her Jay-Z's mistress. We know this girl. We're going to give her an identity at this point. And see, she a better woman than I ever be. Because he would not continue to, um, for, well, it's too late at this point. He would not continue to sit around and fool our lie in my damn bed and deny me. You know, like, I, to Aria Curry, I want to know, what, how is your self-esteem set up that your pussy still even get wet for a nigga that constantly runs around and denies your existence and the role that you have? in his life. And I was going to save this for the end of my thing, but I'm going to go ahead and address you, daughter, while I got you on the line. See, I don't know who raised y'all little young dumb hoes, but I'm here to tell you, the quickest way to lose a man is to have a baby from him. Okay? Let me repeat that to y'all. The quickest way to lose a man is to have a baby from him. That's the dumbest thing you can ever do when you're trying to keep a man. The quickest way to lose a man is to have a baby from him. See, you're sitting over there with your little homegirls, Kathleen and Kiki, because they getting a divorce, you're now about to have a baby, and you think that you won. You got the appearance of a victory, baby. It's hollow, okay? That is masquerading. That, that situation you got right now is one big masquerade, okay? Masquerading as a victory. And here is why. And I mean no harm when I say this. You are currently carrying a 30-year prison sentence growing inside you. It's a 30-year prison sentence. Because kids, you, you, you all, you're not tied to kids today, 18 or more. These kids ain't growing up the way they used to. They don't get growing until they're 30. You are carrying a 30 year prison sentence. Number one. Number two, your baby gonna always be fifth in line. Your baby ain't gonna never get what her children get. And your baby ain't gonna never hold the place in his heart that them other four children have. And it's because the circumstances by which that baby has come onto this earth. And it's not that child's fault. And not to say your child won't have a great life and you won't be a great mother, so on and so forth. But here's the other thing. It was Melody of the day and it's going to be your ass tomorrow. See, you were never the complete package for him. You was the side order. You know how when you go to um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you get a bucket of chicken and two sides, and that makes a meal. Well, Melody was the bucket of chicken and the mashed potatoes, and he was missing coleslaw. So he went and got you to be the coleslaw to compete, complete the meal. But you must remember that you came into this picture being coleslaw. Now, he no longer has the bucket of chicken or the mashed potato. <laughs> so baby, at some point, that man gonna go hungry. And not only is he gonna go hungry, he gonna go real hungry. Because he want a, a chicken, a wing, a breast, and mashed potatoes, and all you can offer it's coleslaw. And that's not a read. And that's not saying that you can't ever be the whole meal to somebody else. But you can't turn coleslaw into chicken. And you came into the picture as coleslaw. So what I suggest is that, you know, you stay in the refrigerator because you, you got mayonnaise in you. You stay in the refrigerator. You try to stay as well preserved for as long as you possibly can. 
But please, I beg of you, do not build sandcastles in the sky as to what your future is going to look like with you and this man and this baby. Because if he traded in what was already the idea, ideal nuclear family and destroyed that for what it is y'all got going on, what in the hell do you honestly think? Do you honestly think he gonna do to you? Not to mention, there's going to become a point where you mature, you gonna want more, and you gonna start demanding of him all the things that Melody demanded of him as a, as a wife. And not only is he going to be unable to provide those things for you, he is going to be unwilling to provide those things for you because his attitude is going to be like, how in the hell you got the nerve to sit up here and demand more considering how you came into this situation? It's coleslaw. Now, baby, you, I just gave, baby, I just want you a nasty check. You take that one to the bank and cash her, honey. Cash her. I had no said that, baby. I had to get up and get me some lemonade. Woo, child. Let me find out. I got another uh, career being a pastor down in Newburgh. Jamal Bryan, move out the way. I want to come scam some of the Newburgh people out their money, too. Um, where I leave off? Okay. Um... The other thing I want to point out, you know, Martell talks about being, and this is just a really quick point to all the men out there. Martell talks about being a good husband and a good father and taking care of the bills and bringing in the money, so on and so forth. While I do think that he should get acknowledged for it, you know, yes, you do do this. Men, women, and everybody in between, you do not get cool points for doing what you're supposed to do. Like, I hate people that say, I'm a good, I'm a good father. You're supposed to be. I put my kids through college. You're supposed to. I pay the bills. Bitch, we didn't ask to be here as children. You're supposed to. So you don't get cool points just because so many other people don't do it. Don't mean you get accolades for what you should do. Um, he says that Mel admitted to cheating. Mm, I just don't believe it. And the reason why I don't believe it is because based on his timeline, she admitted to cheating prior to them filming the show, during them filming the show, some years before them filming the show. Regardless of, he had plenty of opportunity to use that as a rebuttal on the show and he never did. Now all of a sudden you come do it on Dr. Heavenly's interview. And here's the sad part about it, right? You actually hustling backwards. I always say, pay me for my pain. If you gonna go through the shit and you and Mel are EPs on this show, that honestly and truthfully was some information that you really should have held for the show because it would have strengthened the show, garnering y'all more viewership, giving y'all more leverage for you to demand a bigger paycheck from home, more free freaking consulting advice that I'm giving you. Why not use it for the show? And I'm gonna go ahead and put this part out here because I called Carlos one time and I asked Carlos, I said, and, and I'm gonna tell this to Melody and it'll probably never happen. I said, you know, why isn't Arian Curry on the show? Like, because at the end of the day, everything going on in Martell and, and Melody's relationship as it pertains to this show surrounds this one particular person. She's the missing piece. You want to see that show triple in ratings? Bring her on. Carlos said, you know, you know, he said, Q, this is not love and hip hop. We can't do the whole ambush thing. It can't get super duper messy because this is on. And then he was like, and plus Melody would never buy into it. She would just never have it. That Mel would kind of have to be part of that decision. So I don't know what I gathered from that is that Mel may have, you know, some creative input on the show, whatever the case may be. But I'm here to offer her this. While Mel's perspective probably is, I'm not finna put this bitch on my show and help her get famous and paid off of some shit that I created and off of my pain, I offer you this. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. Okay. Yeah, she might get a little more recognition and she might get 
$80,000, but you're going to get $1.5 million. You know what I'm saying? And so are you going to block the $1.5 million to keep her from getting the eighty? dollars Cause see, here's the situation. The bitch already laid up with your man. She already got a baby with him. The world already know who she is. She's already getting all the secondhand fame from the show anyway. The more the show grows, the more popularity the things go. The more, she and all the groups, we already know. Everybody in Huntsville know. Everybody knows who she is. She's already garnered the celebrity. So you really not blocking her from nothing other than a couple thousand dollars while you could get the lion's share of it. So my recommendation would be let the shit unfold. It strengthens your show. Get paid for your pain, sis. Get paid for your pain. And don't get caught up in what she gonna gain. Get caught up in everything that is there for you to gain. That's some more free damn consulting advice. Y'all, the spirit moved me today because I'm just making multiple videos and I'm right here. It's that public sweet tea I drank this morning. Um, Melody having two abortions. You know, that was another one of those things that was very cloudy. It was like, I don't understand how you don't want to say, you want to say, but you don't want to say. Martel, you got to learn, my brother, if you're trying to defend yourself, you got to be clear and concise. Now, he did raise a very valid point. You know, uh, we got money. We doing well. We already got other kids. I'm your husband. Why would you go have an abortion? And it sounds as if, if what he's saying is true, it sounds as if Martel was not a part of this decision. Now, I don't know how that works. I don't know if it's um, husband, I'm pregnant, but child this Saturday, I'm going to get an abortion. Or if you just go have the abortion, then come back and tell your husband. And if that was the case, I ain't going to lie to you. If I was a woman and I got pregnant from my husband, I ain't want to have no baby. I just want to tell his ass. You know, so I don't even know how it came about that she had two abortions allegedly and Martel necessarily wasn't a part of it. But um, you did do good with that piece of information in terms of instilling reasonable doubt in us because it's making us say, hmm, what was Mel's reasons for having two abortions? You already had this many kids from him and you just had this last baby. Why wouldn't you have those two? Could it be possible that you didn't know who your potential baby daddy was? You did do a good job with that one, Martel. Melody, I ain't gonna lie to you, sis. You gonna have to let a nigga know what's going on with them abortions, bitch. Okay? Why they trying to, um, and, and, and hell, if you plan on having any more, you better hurry up for Amy Coney Berry. Get her ass up there on the stand. But we need to find out what's going on with them abortions, sis. Ring my line. Carlos got the number. Ring my line. I want to talk to you. Matter of fact, I'm going to reach out to Melody because I need to find out what the fuck going on. Because y'all know. Y'all, listen. Y'all already know that I'm the only person who could get down to the bottom of what the fuck really going on. Now, Heavenly did a damn good job on her interview, especially at the end when she couldn't take no more of Martell's shit. And we're going to talk about that. Um... He says that Melody was messing with the attorney for you. She got the right to. Martel, you cheated on you cheated on Melody in a worse way. It's one thing when your husband running around the streets fucking random bitches after the club. You can almost process that as he just being a dog and he just sticking his dick somewhere, but it ain't nothing. You cheated on her for over five years with the same person. That's a whole different kind of betrayal. That's a whole different kind of hurt. That's a whole different kind of hurt. That is a whole different kind of hurt. I could not imagine what that would do to my self-esteem if I was in a union and somebody cheated on me with the same person for over five years because that does leave you and I don't care how strong you are it leaves you in a situation of what does she have that I don't um, why is it that my man don't come home to me what hold does she have over him what type of zestfully clean is she wiping her kitty box with that I need to buy like it, it makes you why her why her why her then it forces you into this place of comparison you know is the way I wear my hair is the way I wear my clothes is the it, it all of that so after you had a five-year relationship, not even an affair, not no mystery, nigga, you had a relationship, damn near a whole other household, let me tell it. Um, if she did creep off with the with the uh with the with the 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 friend, the attorney, frat brother friend, it ain't right. 
but you have no grounds whatsoever to even snicker or sneer at it. You have like, bro, no. You all you can do is just be like, damn, you got me, and she still ain't even get you. Cause she need to be cheating with him for five years for y'all to be even quiet as it's kept. Like you just really have no grounds, no grounds whatsoever when it comes to that. Um, the future of the show, it's good to know that the show is not going to dissipate because y'all's relationship dissipated. As a matter of fact, um, you know, the future of the show would be very bright if we do see you and this new child and how you and Mel co-parent and what does that look like integrating your four children with Mel, with this baby, with Ariel. I mean, that's the damn story. And that's one that's very relatable because the gag is what Martel, Aria, and, and Melody are going through, this three-way love affair, it's actually very common. Let me look at Kirk and Rashida. You know, and, and, and Rashida had to integrate another baby into her marriage. It happens to all people cheat with mistresses and have babies and stuff all the time. It would be worthwhile for A, for Melody to show how you get over such a betrayal, for Martel to show um, how you grow from it and get from it and become a better man and what the end result is and how Aria can because she got a whole, she got a story. She got a story, you know, and th there, there's a lot here to be done. And then not to mention too, there's also a, a large place for the show to go. There's a reconciliation that needs to happen amongst Marceau and Martel and, and Tisha and the girls and all that too because no matter what you say it was this mistress and them laughing about it a situation that you created that just helped just, just blow, blow this shit all out the one and now y'all ain't even friends no more and the sad part about it is like it, that would be justifiable if y'all remained married and y'all marriage became solid as a rock but you'd be a damn fool to lose friends and a marriage like y'all gotta find a way to reconcile I mean try to salvage some of this damn shit because if not the joke really is on Melody and Martel if y'all walk away from this situation with a broken family and broken friendship don't lose all the way around find a way to get paid for your pain and salvage something uh, of it all him and Heavenly get into a heated debate about reasons he cheated and Heavenly got his ass all the way together. He did, and he couldn't take it. But it made sense because you could see his wheels churning. She was like, basically, as a man, it's always your job to remain the man. If your wife is withdrawn from you, something is going on with her. And versus cheating on her, it is your job to figure out what it is you need to do to reel her back in or to love on her even harder. Not go say, oh, well, fuck you. I'm finna go run around and cheat on you. Like, no, as men, it is our job to be the protector, the provider, and the, and the problem solver. Solve the problem. As a man, you're also supposed to have integrity and be self-aware enough and have enough self-respect for yourself to say, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm looking like a dog to all of America. Fuck this. I try, and if she can't get right, I'm going to leave her and live my best life for me and my children. That's what a real grown man does. You know what I'm saying? Like, it starts with integrity. Like, it starts and it stops with integrity um, and that was not taken up for Mel because and I'm sure he did at some point did feel all the things he said that he was feeling but see what Martel did going back to him thinking that he's smarter than everybody in the room he sat down and concocted that and thought that that was going to take some of the stank off of his cheating if I can paint the picture that yes I did cheat and I own it but I cheated because she made me because that's basically what you're saying she made you cheat and nobody can't make you do what you don't want to do. And Heavenly told us as you a cheater because you a cheating man. He was like, I, I'm not a cheating man. I've never cheated. I only, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never cheated. You just sat in this one for five years. I mean, what the fuck? Cheater. <laughs> uh, I digress. Um, but then that was the part, too, that got infuriating because he couldn't sit in those emotions. And so he started... Instead of sitting there owning it, he started playing with the word. I didn't say that. That's not what I said verbatim. I said something around it. At the end of the day, nigga, stop playing games. She, she paraphrased what you said, nigga, but the thought is the same. Um, and I already talked to him playing about her saying when the last time she saw Aaron. Um, yeah, I watched that interview. That's an hour of my time. I can't get back. God knows how much time I spent making this. Um, and I'm exhausted, but I do hope Mel and Martel both watch this. 
Um, and I am waiting on Carlos and Ohm to call me to host this damn reunion because we got a lot that we need to discuss. I'll call y'all later. Happy Halloween. Bye.